Alright guys, welcome to the second video in the Python with Sentiment Analysis, Finance, and Pandas tutorial video series. In this video, we're going to be just running through the quick basics of Pandas, so by no means is this uh, you know all-inclusive video for Pandas. Just a quick intro to get our feet wet so we kind of get comfortable using Pandas before we move into using it for our purposes. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to need to make a few imports. So we're going to import date time and this is just uh, actually more for working with Yahoo Finance but uh, we're gonna need that uh, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import pandas as PD and then we're gonna also import pandas .io .data. and then we're gonna go from pandas import data frame because that's the type of object that we're gonna use here and then import matplotlib.pyplot as a PLT and then finally, from matplotlib import style. Now, if you have not, uh, if you don't have a current version of matplotlib that includes this style, I did just recently put out a video for uh, matplotlib in style. Uh, hopefully, I'll remember to. I'll put the link to that video in the description. We're just doing that because it's just a really quick way to make your matplotlib graphs look decent without um, doing a lot of coding work to get there. I also do have a, an entire series on working with matplotlib and making it look good and then also doing a bunch of you know cool things with matplotlib so anyway if you're looking for more stuff like that I, I have a bunch of stuff like that in my channel but anyway continuing on uh, for style if you're gonna use style you need either a new version of matplotlib or you at least need the style folder with the actual style that in it that we're gonna use and again if you don't know what I'm talking about um, check the description for a link to that video. It's a video tutorial on how to get this set up. So uh, we're going to say style that I use, and it's going to be ggplot. Also, if you don't want to look up how to do styles with matplotlib, just simply, oops, just simply don't use, you know, style. Don't just leave these two lines out of your code, and you're fine. So, anyways, we're going to do that now. Um, what we want to do first is we need to get data from somewhere. The easiest way to do this is just to grab data real quick from Yahoo Finance. So let's just say let's we're going to grab the S&P 500. So SP 500 is going to be our variable name, and that's going to equal pd dot pd dot io dot data dot get underscore data underscore Yahoo, and <clears throat> we're going to put in the um, symbol. And for Yahoo, the symbol for the S&P 500 is percent five e oops all caps e G S P C that's the symbol and then comma and I'm just gonna hit enter to just kind of save space and so we don't go off the screen uh, we're gonna say start and that's gonna be what is the start time we want to use well starts gonna equal date time dot date time and here you specify the date time here and that's gonna be uh, 2000 and then the month and the day so um, October 1st 2000 and then after that come down again and then we're gonna say end equals date oops date time dot date time and here we're gonna use 2012 1 1 okay so that is our SP 500 data so that's it for there now let's go ahead and print SP 500 dot head and what that's gonna go ahead and do for us is print out just the top portion of our data so with that, let's go ahead and save that, and we will run it. And no module name PD. What did we do? Import. Okay. For whatever reason, I said import pattern does dot PD. I meant to say as PD. So that's why we threw this error. No module named PD. Uh, let's try that one more time. There we go. That's what we wanted. So here we can see the data that we got of the S and P 500. Okay, so this is um, just the starting bit of data for the S&P 500, but we have a lot more. We just printed the head, which just prints the first you know, five bits of data. So basically, we know what we're working with what we expect ourselves to be working with. Okay, so that gives us head. Now, the next thing we want, might want to do with data is we might want to save it to like a CSV. So here's how you can save the data to a CSV. You can say SP500.2 underscore CSV, and that's something that's built into Pandas. And now you can just say, uh, what, what, what do you want to call this file? So we can call this sp500 underscore open high low close up CSV. So that's going to save the data to a CSV. So when we run it, we save it. Um, there's our head there. And if we come down to where we are, we should have this as a CSV file. 
So we open it up and here is our file. Sure enough, it starts on the 2nd of October, comes all the way down um, for a while, scroll it down, and we come all the way down to 2011, uh, December 30th, okay? So that's our data there. Um, now, uh, what we want to do is, and I was, I guess, a, one, you know, January first, probably a weekend or something. That's why it didn't go all the way there. So that's that. Uh, the next thing that we can do, though, is we actually say we want to work with this data. Uh, so a lot of times you're going to have an Excel spreadsheet, right, that you want to work with. So maybe you downloaded that Excel spreadsheet. So now let's say uh, we don't need to pull this data every time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of this. And now let's say we want to work with a spreadsheet. So we just made that spreadsheet. So we can say uh, DF for data frame. So a lot of times when you're reading someone else's code, it's going to look kind of like this. They're going to call stuff DF, and that's data frame. So DF equals pd.read underscore CSV. What is the CSV we want to read? Well, it's going to be SP500 underscore OHLC.CSV. That's what we saved it as. And then we're going to specify what the index column is. Now the index is basically how do we want to um, organize this data basically like what is the main column of data so in our case the main column we're gonna say is date so we're gonna say index underscore call equals and it's gonna equal date okay so basically it's like it's what the what's on the first row of data and if you don't have anything on the first row of data you could say index call equals zero and that that would make the first column that so anyway index call date and then finally, we want to uh, do parse underscore dates, and that equal to true. And what that's going to do is pandas is going to parse the dates for us. So if you followed any of my other plotting tutorials where we have to you know, convert a timestamp into a matplotlib mdates format or whatever, it was just very tedious. And what this is going to do for us is parse the dates for us. And so it's actually very good at parsing dates in all kinds of formats. So very exciting to uh, have that. It saves a lot of time. Now again, we can say uh, print df dot head, and we'll save and run that again. Actually, let me start a new window just so uh, we're not looking at old stuff. So again, uh, new window, and sure enough, it looks just like it looked before. So uh, we're obviously working with the same data here. So we'll close out of that. <clears throat> now um, there's a header. Now uh, we can also do something like this. So we can say print df dot index. Okay, and what that's going to do? We'll get rid of that. Um, is print the index so here is our index here so it's basically just a really long list of dates because that's what we said our index was was date so that's that now uh, we can also just access uh, a specific column kind of like what we just did with index because index column was our dates column but we can also do something like this so we could say time series for ts equals uh, we could say df dot or not dot close, uh, df, you know, square brackets, and then close. So that's basically if you've ever worked with like the JSON module, we're kind of accessing a part of this you know, array basically or data frame, and we're calling into the close column here. So we can say close, and then we can even specify, say we want the last 10 um, rows of the close column. So ts equals that, print ts, run that. And here is that data, right? So this is the close column, and it comes with your index column. So it's, you know, it's giving us the index column as well because that's the index. So that's that. Now, what else can we do? Well, we can also print multiple columns. Whoops, let me turn off my sound. We can also print multiple columns. So here, where we're doing close, well, you can also say close and uh, open. Okay, so we can do that. Uh oh. Hold on, let's close out of this. What do we do wrong here? Let's see. Oh, right, right, right. So uh, I tried to put a, like a simple list in here. What we need to do is this. Um, uh, that should work for us now. Let's try that one more time. Yeah. Okay. So it, well, what I was thinking we were doing is we were putting basically multiple parameters into there without um, giving it a list. So what we had to do here is before without the second uh, round of uh, square brackets we were putting basically like a, a list in here and really the the object in there needs to be the list not a list anyways um, so that works so you need to close open you could all we could also do um, hi here okay save and run it and there you go so 
that's a uh, that's just real quickly one of the nice things about pandas is you can access specific columns without having to do really weird split functions and all this and it does it very fast um, a lot faster than any split function would do it so um, so that's an example of doing you know accessing different columns and stuff like that now the next thing that I just want to show you guys is you can also add columns and we can even do some simple math with these columns so um, so an example of this would be say we, we could say to specify a new column what we would do is DF that's uh, references our data frame right so like right up here that's our data frame so DF equals or I'm sorry DF and then square brackets here and here we can specify a new column so we could say H minus L and this is high minus low so kind of a popular um, volatility sort of measurement is the high minus low you know what is the price fluctuation for that day so DF um, high minus low and we're gonna say that equals DF dot Hi. Now this is interesting that we're able to do this, right? Because we never, because this is taking on the form of kind of like an objects within Python, and this is something that's cool about what pandas does for us. Because no, but you could also say you you don't have to say dot high, but you could say df um, high like that. Um, but you can also get away with doing df dot high like that, and that's really neat. So df dot high minus and then df dot low. And so this is going to be what's the difference between the high and the low price. And it's going to define that as a new column in our data frame. And so we can do that. Now we'll come down here and we can say, um, let's go ahead and just print df.head. Just, just to show us the whole, the whole data set that it's together now. So we can save it, run it, and kind of running out of space here. Uh, but anyway, you've got data, you know, open, high, low, close, volume, adjust to close, and then high minus low. And we actually have this information right here uh, for us. We made that really quick calculation based on other parts of that uh, row. So that's an example of how we can do that. Now, just like you can add a column, we can also get rid of a column. So we'll print the df.head, and then we can say del df, um, oops, del not defined, <laughs> del df and h minus l. And then we can print df.head save that run it and again we see here that you know in this one in the top one we do have the H minus L and in this one we've deleted that column entirely so you can add columns we can get rid of columns um, so the other thing we can do as well is add say a moving average okay so that's a really popular thing that people like to do so we'll leave high minus low I think um, we'll leave high minus low there and so for example we could say uh, We'll say close equals df adj close. So that's our column there, and that's what we're going to say close is. And then we can say ma equals pd.rolling mean. So this is a moving average. Uh, rolling mean. And then what do we want to perform a rolling mean on? Well, we want to perform it on close. And then what kind of moving average do we want? Well, this is daily data. And actually, this is prime. I guess it's daily data. Um, 50, so we'll say a 50 moving average, okay? And now what we can do is print MA, and then we'll say the last 10 rows of MA. Right, so this is the last 10 rows of that moving average. Now, uh, let's get rid of this. Um, and I guess what we can do now is, let's go ahead and we can start just plotting this data up. So let's do so we've got an MA and we've got a close so let's go ahead and do um, AX1 equals PLT subplot and we're gonna say this is a two by one by one I'm sorry it's a, a two by one and then it's you know chart number one um, then what we're gonna want to do is AX1 plot what do we want to plot well we want to plot close and we're gonna give it a label of SP 500 because it's the S&P 500 so that's why we're going to do that now we also want to plot let's say the moving average okay so we can ax1 dot plot ma label equals uh, 50 ma okay and now we can go ahead and add the legend to this so plt dot legend 
And now let's go ahead and plot the Hana as well, okay? Because some people use that as a, as a uh, signal. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we can say AX2 uh, equals PLT dot subplot. And again, this is gonna be a two by one and it's gonna be chart number two. And now we're gonna do something um, nice is because since it, we, these two go together, we're gonna say share x equals ax1. So this is gonna make both of the plots share the axes. Otherwise, if you start doing something in one subplot, the other one is not gonna follow. Uh, so it's really easy to get your dates kind of mixed up. So share x equals ax1. And now let's go ahead and ax2 dot plot. And we're gonna plot df h minus l and we'll call this we'll say label equals h minus l plt dot legend again for this subplot and then plt dot show okay and that should give us a graph of the s p 500 a 50 moving average of the s p 500 and the plotting of the high minus low the high minus low might be a very messy plot but we'll see so let's go ahead and save and run it. And again, if you don't, if you didn't use style, um, that's okay. This will still show up. It just won't look the same as mine does. Okay. So anyway, we'll hit okay. Invalid syntax. Okay, we figure out our comma after this too. Okay. Run it again. Okay. Nah, that's not bad. Okay. So here is our chart, and I'll just fit it to our screen here. Okay. So again, this is our S and P 500 information. Okay, and then this is our moving average. So the red line is the actual S&P 500. This blue line is a moving average, basically a 50 MA of uh, the S&P 500. And then down here we have high minus low, which is indicative of volatility. And that's no surprise because we have the most volatility here and we can see it's very high here. Um, and then we also have some volatility here. It gets very extremely high there. Um, and yeah, okay. So those are just some of the basics of uh, using pandas, charting with some pandas or modeling, whatever. Um, obviously we didn't get you know super in depth, but we learned how to access columns, access specific columns, access the whole thing, read from you know spreadsheets, um, do some simple math by you know doing the high minus low, for example, um, deleting columns, adding columns if I didn't already add, uh, say that, and then obviously charting this stuff up. So. Uh, those are just some of the very basic stuff. We will be getting a little bit more in depth into this series and doing some other things with pandas. But um, anyway, to do this yourself would have been kind of a lot of work. Uh, we would have been do, spending a lot of time splitting up things and organizing things, whereas with pandas it's very quick and easy. Um, it's, you know, it's very few lines actually. <laughs> uh, normally we would have had quite a few more lines to make that chart. So. Anyways, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the uh, comment section. If you're having trouble or whatever, leave that below, and I'll try do my best to help you out. Maybe someone else could help you up, help you out as well. Um, so that's going to conclude this video. In the next video, we're going to start actually working with the data set uh, that I had you all download, and we'll start actually you know doing some analysis with that data. So stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions, and until next time.